So this is uh, Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under, and I've got someone with me who I, I can't think of anyone that I would uh, rather be speaking to about the great methane monster, <laughs> uh, the author of the two great videos which have, um, and numerous presentations. So um, yeah, really, uh, I think uh, that thing that came through uh, via Sam Karana, it really just gave a chance for everyone to have a, a discussion and uh, it was it was pretty stark. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, we're well through the 90 hours and it doesn't look as though we're there. So, uh, Well, th th this is how I kind of feel about deadlines and things like that. I don't like them. I don't like it that we give things deadlines and I don't, no. I just, I just, I just think it puts people into a tizzy because um, you did make that video 90 hours till the yeah. ice melts at the North Pole, which I think is a very good possibility and we can get into it. Yeah, know, well, you need to wake about, people up sometimes. <laughs> why, you know, why that would be, but, but I really am adverse to deadlines. People yeah. are always asking me how long have we got how do yeah, i know i know honestly you know I and have then no they idea say is there going to be a blue ocean event but i mean that means that there's a you know, presumably that there's a million square kilometers right. uh, of, and, of, of, of ice left what if it's two million uh, square right. kilometers and, is, and let's let's just be you know clear here just because the ice will probably melt at the North Pole very, very soon. That does not mean that we're in a blue ocean event by long shot. It no, just no, 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 it's, it's, yeah. it, it's, it's the first stage. Yeah, but it, but, it's the first stage, for but sure. The critics, the people who are kind of denying this and, you know, disbelieving it, I find that they, the only thing that they'll ever talk about is is uh, sea ice extent. Well, that's, that's only a very small part of the picture because the ice yeah. is, is, is just paper thin, you know? Yeah, well, sea ice extent is practically meaningless at this yeah. point. All it means is that there's the thinnest skin of a, of a frozen ice going across, and they call that extent. But extent that is 10 meters deep and extent that is, you know, uh, less than half a meter deep, that's, that's a pretty big difference. What we really want to talk about here is volumes. And yeah. we also want to talk about oh the Oh, God, rivers I've got something really current. strange happening here. There's a sort of noise, a banging noise happening. I, I, I hope it's not going to affect the, the recording. Yeah, I can hear it from my end too over there. Anyway, as well. um, so shall I just share the screen and then we'll just go through it together? Yeah, please, please so, do. Um, that would be great. Okay, so. Um, no, I don't. Okay, can you see that all right? I can see that perfectly. This is great. Yeah, so that's kind of. Oops, uh, it always goes, uh, so briefly it kind of went below the 2012 line. I suppose as we move into August, things are moving, cooling down a little bit, um, you know, we'll, we'll, it's moving back up, but that's the, that's well, the sea ice extent. I, I, I think we have a pretty good chance here, just looking at this, uh, 2020 has been below the 2012, which henceforth has been the lowest, sea ice extent. And again, here we're dealing with extent and it's just not the greatest measure in the world, as we mentioned. But, you know, look at it. It's yeah. really only met the 2012 somewhere around June and uh, perhaps July but now it's gone down under and you know we don't reach the lowest sea ice extent until September so I think there's probably a pretty good chance we're yeah. going to be 2012. And things can around. go on I've noticed the last couple of day, uh, years that things tend to go on yeah this yeah the melt season ends in September but uh, that's not where it ends, you know, things, uh, you know, happen well into October. Yes, they do. And yes, they do. Anyway, we'll just go through. So uh, this, yeah. is, this is the thing that uh, nobody could find their way to, <laughs> which surprised okay. me. Yes, so, right. So this is from the Danish Meteorological Institute. Yeah, so this is from Institute. the Danish. 
right. thing. And I've always, I've never used the Danish site because I've always liked the US Navy. And uh, it seemed to always show ice that was thicker than what the US Navy uh, was showing. But this is, this is pr practically, right. they're, they're, they're sort of on the same page, I think, on this. Right, right. Well, I think what's important here is to notice the bits of the darkest blue that's on there, and that's between half a meter and a quarter meter yeah. um, of ice thickness. And you can see, I mean, take a look at the North Pole, and right there, there's a couple of dark blue dots, and it is really just pushing itself in there. And you know, that could also be from all sorts of currents that are going on under yeah. there. Um, you know, the Lena River, when it comes out, um, it actually is so hot coming out of Siberia, it leaves a streak of melted yeah, ice. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's the one thing. And then the other thing is, I don't think, very few people have been talking about the uh, this, this cyclone that we got, you know, the weekend before last. It just, oh, yeah. it just churned up the ice. Pam just sort of said, oh, it's like an egg beater. Yeah, no, it absolutely did. And especially because the ice is so thin, when that cyclone hit up in the Arctic, it was so strong and it just broke up whatever ice was there. So, of course, that's going to make that ice a lot less stable. It can rebond, but it's not going to bond as tightly as, a, as it was before, you know. That's so, right. And it's not nothing like what it was in 2012 yeah. when we had that cyclone, uh, uh, you know, because the, uh, the ice then was relatively intact. Now it's not, yeah. you know. That's no, true. It's true. It's interesting how low it's getting. So this is from August 6th and August yeah. 5th. Here we have sea ice concentration. Okay, so back to sea ice thickness, August 6th. Um, you can see that over in all of the Siberian seas, the Kara Sea, the Laptev Sea, the yeah. East Siberian Sea, they're all ice free up there. Look yeah, yeah, that. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, as I will show, you know, we've got uh, unprecedented amounts of methane coming out of the area just above Severnaya Zemlya. Yeah. Absolutely. But anyway, I'll go on to the next one. So, sure. Uh, yeah, I, was, I sort of learned this with Marco. There's a, I've got a range of, of databases that I like to look at. Um, right. So this one shows the sea ice uh, concentration. Sure. And it's really getting down there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, the whiter it is, the stronger it is, the yeah. more blue it, the more blue it is, the the worse the ice is. It's, you know, full of holes, it's full of water, it's full of all sorts of things that are making it less strong ice. And just looking at this right away, you can see like over in Alaska, as expected, you know, the sea ice concentration is very, very light, very poor. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then right at that star, what marks the North Pole, you can see there is the sea ice concentration there is really starting to um, get very poor again, you know, yeah, yeah. you can see that. You so know. it's gone in the Russian seas, and now it's sort of going in the in the in the Beaufort. And yeah. I would argue that there's very little ice. I, you know, I don't think that we're going to see a blue ocean event, but I would be surprised if there's much ice north of the uh, eighty degree north parallel. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with you. So the 80, 80 degree north parallel, that's that kind of roundish yeah, circle that's, that that's, goes. Yeah, that's a circle sort of around here. Sure, yeah. Oh, I agree and, with and you. And every well, time I've looked, what's sort of really shown that clearly is the US Navy data when I look at the sea ice thickness. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's really, really stark. Mm -hmm. No, okay. this, is, this is intense. This is amazing. Yeah. And this is what I like to, this is from the University of Bremen. And that's okay. again, that's sea ice concentration. An, another way to look at it, but blue being bad, <laughs> you know, <laughs> if you want to think of poor sea ice concentration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can kind of see, like, if you look just north of Greenland, there are two kind of blue lines that are going yes, up yes, there yes. on either side of the North Pole. And 
I'm looking, you know, when I was doing my studies on, on um, Arctic sea ice, I did a lot of um, studies on the rivers and the effects that the rivers had on the sea ice concentration, the Arctic rivers, right, yeah, that flow yeah. into the Arctic, and also um, the effect that it had on sea ice thickness and the water temperature. Yeah, and yeah. you can almost see, if you look at that, there's like uh, just to... The, I guess we should say left of that North Pole blue dot. You see, like within the 80th or whatever, you know, right yeah, north yeah. of Greenland to the left. And you follow that line up and it goes all the way up to where the Lena River comes out. And yeah. the Lena River is very powerful and it oh, boy, pumps yeah. a lot, it pumps a lot of hot. A lot of, I mean, it's a big river and it's very, very hot. And think about how um, hot it's been in Siberia. It's been 100 degrees yeah. for like days and days on end. Yeah. That river is super, super hot. So that Lena River is coming out just where all that green bit is, just right at the top there. And it's yeah. coming out and you can see where it's actually riddling away on the undercarriage of the ice there. That's my interpretation. Yeah, because anyway. two major rivers, aren't they? The, the Lena and the Yenisei. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. exactly, exactly. Anyway, uh, yeah. So this, this is what really alarms me, and I've got data there. Uh, if you look at the GIF, you know, if you want to see how uh, a meter of ice just disappears in 30 days um, you just look at the gif it's amazing right. i did see the gif that you had posted and it is yeah. really stunning so what we're looking at here is not sea ice extent it is really kind of more like sea ice volume right how thick is the ice yeah yeah you know? that's right and then take a look again at the bullseye it's not all that surprising right where the north pole yeah, is yeah. it's going in it, it's it's so that, can you give me that's the, about uh, that's about a meter thick but is it the turquoise is for, i think from memory is is, is it's um two, two oh sorry the, yeah thick. the blue the, the, uh, dark, the turquoise the, like, is the two turquoise meters blue. thick and then and, and and then the the other sort of purpley this, thing is is half a meter or less right Right, right. So that kind of lightish purple is half a meter. So the yeah, yeah. the ice right at the North Pole is looking to be almost about half meter thick, which is yeah, God, yeah. I mean, you just that's you hardly don't have to go anything. very far north uh, yeah, beyond that, do you? To, no, to, to find it's just areas. like it's just like twenty inches thick, guys. That's not yeah, yeah. that's not very thick at I all. Mean, it's yeah, God, anyway, you wouldn't want looking. to walk on it. Oh, no, you certainly wouldn't. Dad. I bet they lose buoys there, you know, all the time. Yeah, they and I think I saw that the they re uh, removed some of their, um, you know, their investigative, you know, because it wasn't safe. Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, be it becomes really, really hard to put a buoy on the North Pole, you know, yeah, because yeah. the North Pole is not, like, stable. It's not just, like, always there. It's spinning. It's a gyre, yeah, yeah. right? It's a gyre, and it's going round and round and round, albeit slowly, but it is a gyre. And the ice at the North Pole is not particularly stable. And looking at this, nothing here really surprises me, considering, like, for the last several years, we've had yeah. rain at the North Pole oh, in the yeah. middle of winter. In the middle of winter, in the middle of the winter solstice, there was, for the last couple of years, there's been rain at the North Pole. Yeah. And that's, you know, when there's 23 hours of darkness a day or something you yeah. know out of 24 it's Gosh, just, I, i'm uh, losing your volume again i don't know what are happening. you yeah no. very strange it looks all good on my end i can hear myself okay. yeah oh well. <laughs> well, well, well we'll see how it comes out at the end anyway right. and but this is this is i mean this is what you're talking about these are these are actually maximum temperatures and, and it's been like this and you know for a month or so above above zero and um, it hasn't basically changed. Wow. Look at Siberia is still really hot. I Northern know. Europe is still really hot. Yeah. It's just amazing. <laughs> so the coldest land on Earth, really, if you look at this thing, is up in the Canadian archipelago where all that ice is kind of piled up anyway through drifting. Yeah. And uh, the north of... Uh, 
uh, Alaska and uh, the north of Canada yeah, there, and Siberia. Of the interior of Greenland, yeah. Right. Siberia is hot. Well, that that little that little part of Siberia is okay. The one that's closest to Alaska, but the rest of it is really on fire. Um, yeah, and of course, that's the thing about the fires. Uh, I've never heard anyone mention it really very much, but they're peat fires, and of course, uh, yes. I think they were forty percent worse this year than they were last year. That was the initial reports, yeah. and and and, oh of, and of course, they don't Those... really ever go out. Those things are so scary because once peat catches fire, you know, it's combustible and it, yeah. that's why people burn it for, for heat, you know, but it doesn't go out very easily and it can stay smoldering underground, you yeah, know, yeah. all winter long and spring to life in the summer. But and here... Pa and Pam, Pam said, um, look, at what they're, look at what they're fighting the fire with, you know, they just had khaki, you know, uniforms. They didn't have any protective thing you know it was, it was very very kind of basic and yeah. of course you you've got to you've got to fight these fires very very intensively and look at the area it's impossible no impossible. i mean there's there's no infrastructure up there i mean it's not like you know i mean yeah. <laughs> you're fighting in the wilderness so what have we got here what are we so looking this is at the sea here? surface temperature anomalies so uh, i mean they're just okay. absolutely huge they're just off the chart right. you know all that whole area right around the you know the edge of uh, you know of where the where the ice is I mean, it's either red or you know that yeah. kind of other you know, color. What, you know what really kind of disturbs me about this is the sea surface temperature up in the siberian seas you know look at the one you know directly north here just north of that uh the Arctic ice that's still there. I mean, that's yeah, like yeah. red, that's red hot. I mean, it's red, you know, I, I've never ever seen this. And, and all the years I've been monitoring this. Yeah. And this is the actual temperatures. I haven't okay. got the, co uh, the, the color chart, but I mean, that's-, that's Oh, that's, the color that's, chart's that's right there. It's on the, it's on the oh, side there. It's on the there. right, but it doesn't really yeah. show. Yeah, show but this well. is actual. But, it, but it's above, but, it's, but that's above zero. You know, and that's yeah. that's eroding. You know, no one ever takes that into account either. That this is, you know, this is salt water that's eroding right. the ice from underneath. Right. You know. Right. I mean, anything above zero degrees centigrade is going to be melting the ice, and the ice yeah, is, yeah. is going to be actively melting. And uh, of course, it doesn't look so bad, you know, if you just look at the ice. But that's because this you can't measure the sea surface. Uh, temperature when it's full of ice, right? Yeah, so that's yeah. why that's why. And that gives a really picture of the extent of the ice. Let's see, this was just a couple, this is just like yesterday, right? The day before, um, August 5th. So this is very, very current data. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's the most da uh, latest data that I could find. Yeah, very current data, absolutely. And uh, this is what it looks like from the satellite. Yeah, little hotter. Uh, you can't tell a lot is... because there's an awful lot of cloud in there. Cloud, but the the land is outlined with a little line, so you can see yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So you can see. So you, you can, can kind, kind of, of see. break through the cloud cover. You can see that you know there's a lot of open water there. A lot yeah. of open water where there shouldn't be. I mean, if you get this area, you know, in the in the Kara and the Laptev and everything, I mean, there's just so much open water. It's just unbelievable. Yeah, no, it's absolutely true. It's so it's incredibly scary. I've got a scary. couple of pictures here. So, um, oh, I don't, uh, like, I'm not quite sure. I mean, that's somewhere, that's, you can see the edge of the cloud and that's, you just see these little, little bits where, you know, where you can see behind the cloud. That's mm. what it looks like, you know, in the in, in the Beaufort after after mm. the cyclone. Mm. Oh, okay. So this is actually okay. You know what we're looking at here? We're looking at broken ice. That is like, look at all that ice is all broken up. It's like in little bitsy parts. Yeah. And um, that's if if that's up in the Beaufort. Um, then that's probably the result, both of the cyclone and the late summer melt as well. Yeah, because it was a big cyclone, you know, it was right up there. The second, second most powerful I, I, I gather in Arctic history after the 2012. Mm. 
<laughs> we're just full and this of is records. Get, this is getting a bit closer to the pole. I, I'm not quite sure exactly, you know, where these are, but I mean, it just yeah. shows the the same thing. And of course, yeah. this is when, what you have to do. You just have to sort of peek yeah. in behind the behind the clouds to see what's yeah. going on behind the curtain, so to speak. Yeah, one really has to use one's imagination on this one, I must say. Yeah. A little not knowing exactly where we are, but you get the general idea. The blue is the open water, and you can see right yeah. in the center of the picture there's a tremendous amount of blue, but it's a little bit difficult to interpret it. Yeah. And uh, just, I think this is finally, yeah. you can see here where the, uh, this is, this is um, uh, Norway is Emilia. That's where, all, where you mentioned it, where, you know, where all the the, the submarine accidents were. There's, there's traditionally yes. been a lot of methane coming up from here, but now it's coming up from, from this area and it's been it doing sure it for is. a long time. It sure is. Now, now, is this a methane concentration map? What are we looking this, at this is, this is looking, this is from CAMS, from Copernicus, and it's looking at, um, uh, you know, C, um, you know, surface uh, methane emissions, and of course, it has yeah. a color chart. Uh, so even even the green here, you know, which is supposed to be good, is, you know, is about nineteen hundred parts per billion, and this yeah. is getting up to two thousand or something, I think. So, yeah, what's so, curious you know, so, about this? Yeah, is, so is there's how... huge amounts of methane coming up. It's not it's not just these sort of areas. Exactly. I'm seeing a lot in the center of Alaska, which is kind of um, yeah. interesting. And, and then, do you think and then that the might have to do with like top of Scandinavia and actually deep into Siberia here? We yeah, can yeah. See. Oh, lots, lots coming up from, from Siberia. Yeah. So, now, you know, the permafrost is melting and that permafrost is going to be exuding methane. Yeah, yeah. So, I so that wonder, must be what you know, is happening um, in Scandinavia because it's coming up there big time. I've never really understood it. Hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, that's um, really puzzling on that island. You know, right in the Arctic Circle, they're the one closest to the Arctic Circle, right at 80 degrees north, yeah. right? That is very, very puzzling why it should be such a spike in there. I would expect to see probably more methane coming out off of the Laptev Sea, but even so, I think the light green is a higher yeah, concentration. Yeah, well, I mean, it's very, very deceptive. I mean, about... I can't remember whether it was uh, a year ago or two years ago uh, after Margot made an inquiry, uh, then they just quietly changed the color charts to make it very deceptive. So um, you have this color green. Up you know, to old tricks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you just got to look beyond that. Mm -hmm. So um, what have I got here? Uh, that's interesting. Can you can you go down on that picture a little bit? Yeah, there you can see Scandinavia. Yeah, yeah. So I'll, what there I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll set up the. I'll see if I can set this up. Uh, sometimes it happens. Doesn't happen. Oh, you mean it's got a little yeah, gift yeah, for movie or something? Oh, oh, would you look at that? Yeah, that's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, and then it goes into a a, a, um, a forecast period. Okay. So that's how it looks, you know, lots of... Uh, well, coming up. It kind of just like poofs out, kind of like breathing, and then it sort of, you know, probably goes up into the upper atmosphere. Yeah, so yeah. this methane must be being measured kind of near ground level, because otherwise it wouldn't be so concentrated. Right, because if you if you measure the methane up like it, uh, you know, ten thousand meters or something like that, then it's going to be a lot more diffuse. But this is very sharp. This is very targeted, so it must be being measured at a almost like near ground level. Right, I would think. I'll just uh, I'll just go to this uh, last one. Uh, so this just says this is what I sent to you. I oh, think yeah. This, this, this one's a stunner. 
this is a stunner. So now just to reiterate, what's the date range that we're going through here? Can we see that date range? It's at the top. It's at uh, the top. The it, is, it's uh, well, the dates are changing. It's, it's the last oh, there, 30, there, there, it's that's the last it, that's 30 it. days. Right. So here we go. 2020, 08. Okay. So yeah. So it starts at 714. So it starts on the 14th of July and goes to the 5th of August. So, you know, that's roughly like what, three weeks. So look what's happened. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah, now it this is, a, is it, it is this an is oh my a, God moment, isn't it? I mean, how how you lose a meter of ice and oh a my of God! Weeks, you know? Yeah, well, you know, ice plus heat equals water. Never never fails to amaze me. Um, this, this is a stunner. This is absolutely a stunner, and you can see how quickly the ice can go away in the yeah. presence of heat, the heat of the summer. And this is a sea ice thickness, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so I, look I, at that. It doesn't surprise me that people are saying that the North Pole is going to be ice free. Look at that. The, the, the only thick ice left is in the Canadian archipelago. The, the North Pole doesn't have thick ice. So, you know. know. Something strange happening here. Uh, I can't get back to. Yeah, you're good. You're turn good. this off. That's strange. I hope it's been um, recorded. Oh, no. Uh, I mean, you're getting it all right, aren't you? I, I just yeah, really no, it looks it looks uh, just fine. You know what I'm it getting? looks just fine. Oh, wait a minute, back to meeting. Maybe that's it. Uh, oh, you you lost your um, slideshow. Uh, I, 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 yeah, I sort of kind of lost my. Oh, this is this is a good meditation piece. I mean, look at that. Yeah. yeah. Meditate oh, I got your on volume that. Back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I haven't changed it. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, but we are we are talking, you know, I'm up in uh, the middle of the United States and you're down in New Zealand. And, yeah. uh, you know, so it's not that all, all that surprising. And well, this is it's definitely place. very strange down here, but it's, uh, it's very warm down here. But it has, it? We, we've had a better winter than we've had for the last few winters because we've lost that hot blob on the Tasman Sea. Oh, okay, okay. So you guys were being so we're, afflicted we're, we're, by we're, a hot we're, blob we're, as well. We've got to rest from this for a while. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. This is just a stunner. You can just watch it and watch it and see so many things each time. And what I see is some banding. Um, if you look at this kind of, you know, bullseye in the center, the top left quadrant, you see yeah. some kind of lines, some banding. So that's kind of interesting. That looks like, you know, it's being affected by hot water, by currents, by something flowing on it to give it this kind of, that kind of banded shape there at about 140 degrees east round, round that uh, longitude. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this and of course I, I remember the shock. You know, I think it was last year, or was it the year before, when you know we had all of that super thick ice, you know, at the top of Greenland, and and uh, you know it just suddenly uh, it got these shock headlines, you know, of of how the ice was detaching from the coastline. That's right, that's right. Because if you look at that uh, eighty degree north longitude, right up there at the top of Greenland. That was traditionally until last year. Yeah, I mean, super the place, thick ice. The, the, the place of thickest ice, and people were being so bold as to yeah. say, and well, there's nothing, you know. There's nothing at that level, nothing. No, and people were saying, oh, well, the ice up there just north of Greenland, it's just so thick and so packed in, it's yeah, not going to melt. Yeah, it'll be here till 2040. Who knows, you know. <laughs> but look at this thing. This thing is just melting away before your eyes. It's very scary, actually. And yeah, yeah. Uh, there's no more. I can remember looking at these sea ice extent gifts over the years, over the last, you know, six, seven years. And there was always a little bit of yellow and a little bit of green, which would be three meters and three and a half meters. Nothing like yeah. that. Well, there was always stuff that was up to four meters thick. Yeah. And there's nothing yeah, of that this, left. 
It was there a few weeks ago, but, uh, you know, a month or so ago, but uh, not now. No, not now. So, and I think you're just so right. You know, it's pointless putting a um, putting a date on this. You just got to look at the yeah at, at, at the quality and just know well, that you this have to can't continue the... forever. You know, not right, for another tw- look... ten years, twenty years. Certainly not. Certainly not. And and you have to look at the trends. You know, that's I really don't. As I said before, I really don't like deadlines but if you look at the trends very closely and watch it very closely like you have done with bringing in many different maps many different charts different gifts different animations and put it all together in your head it's like okay you know it may not mount you know melt at the north pole in the next 90 hours yeah yeah but it's gonna melt i mean look at this there's not much holding it together well, the other thing that you might be interested in is what Marco has been doing is she's been taking the the uh, the NOAA readings from you know the Metop one and two, and and kind of recording recording the you know the average reading for each day, and she's just been showing how the levels have been going up, and they they went up by four parts per billion I think in one week. Oh my goodness, that's really. That's really and that's escalating that quickly. Done. It's not, yeah. You know, she's doing fabulous work as a citizen scientist. You yeah, know, this yeah. Is where just every, the, every day she just does the same yeah. thing, same data, yeah. and, you know, and then um, things, you, you start to see things. You, know, you do. You, do that. you absolutely do. And you put lots of different pictures together. You can connect the dots in a kind of three-dimensional yeah, way yeah. almost. You can see it. And you have an awareness. You wrap your awareness around it, you know. Most definitely. Yeah. Well, this is most fascinating and most scary, Robin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Most definitely. Yeah, well, we could talk about this probably for a long time. But, um, yeah, it, it's, um, I mean, I, I yeah, when that news came out, um, I just felt, you know, it was just hit me in the chest for a day or so, you know, I just, I was just in a state of shock, really. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, we, are, we have been looking at this together, you know, as a community for, you know, a long, long time. And, yeah. um, you know, there's been a lot of like, oh, the ice is going to melt this year, this year, next year. But now this time I'm looking at it and I'm like, there's not much hope for this ice. This ice is shriveling away before our very eyes. Yeah. And of course, like- this has huge, huge implications, huge yeah. implications for everything. You know, once the Arctic sea ice goes, the Arctic Ocean is going to get very warm very quickly. Oh, yeah. I and, mean, uh, I don't know that's what... Gonna- what happens if you've got a month, say, of, of relatively open waters? You know how how much the, those waters are going to um, to warm up, to heat up in that time? You know, I would say they're going to heat up pretty quickly. Pretty quickly, I think. Yeah. yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. Well, this is just a stunner. God, yeah. this is the most dramatic one of all, for sure. So mm. I just thought I would show this, you know, to you and to a slightly different audience, perhaps. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think I'll try and find a way to uh, to stop this. I know it's recording because I can see it, you know. <laughs> but, uh, oh, wait a minute, stop video. Okay, yeah. So, um, right, well, yeah, should we leave it at that, Jennifer? Sure, I think so, Robin. I think that's quite stunning. Yeah, kind of amazing. So really that's uh, Jennifer and Seymour Rock. <laughs>